Mayor Crapo, and thank you, Chairman, for your appearance for us today, which I presume will be your final appearance. Um, I'm sure you hope so. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you for three and a half years of sir. service uh, to our country at the SEC, and thank you for being a, a good partner to my office uh, when we agree, and especially when we don't agree in the open lines of communication you've had and representing the people of Arkansas. Um, I want to speak today about a topic that we've discussed in the past, both at these hearings and uh, directly one-on-one, -on -one, and that is uh, the concept of regulation by enforcement. Uh, this is something that became infamous under President Obama. Uh, it's the act of using court rulings or administrative decisions make changes in the rules as opposed to the notice and comment rulemaking process under the Administrative Procedures Act. Uh, it often means that enforcement decisions are based on things that regulators may or may not like, uh, things that remain opaque and sometimes even unknown to regulated players in the market. Um, do you agree that enforcement action should only be taken when a uh, actor in the market violates rules, rules that have either been written by Congress in law or uh, passed into regulations by an agency like yours? Uh, Senator, I, I do. I, I want to qualify that by saying, you know, some rules rely on facts and circumstance um, application. But uh, to the extent you're asking me, should we expand um, uh, authority or regulation um, without going through notice and comment? No, we shouldn't. We should we should do that. And, um... I think it's a, a fundamental principle of the rule of law, which in some way you know, predates the concept of self-government, um, that it, it's hard to have um, an ordered society without clear and established rules known in advance that all citizens can obey and uphold. And that's irrespective of whether or not you agree with the laws or not. Um, it's so vital that we have established written rules in advance. One example that we've discussed before that I want to discuss here today uh, is the uh, SEC Share Class Selection Disclosure Initiative. Um, under that initiative, several firms were fined partly because they didn't list three items in their disclosure. One, uh, that a firm received 12 v one fees. Two, uh, the cheaper shares of the same fund were available. And three, that purchasing fund shares that paid 12 v one fees when cheaper share classes were available would adversely affect the client's return. Um, again, these may be best practices for financial disclosures, but that's not exactly what we're talking about here. We're talking about having clarity in advance of any enforcement decision. Um, can the SEC cite a public document where all three of those elements were listed in advance of any of these enforcement actions, Mr. Chairman? Um. I, this. I don't have a document like that to hand, but I understand uh, the issue very well. Uh, this was an investment advisors engaged in their clients. They have a duty to those clients not to put the investment advisors interest ahead of uh, the client. They also have a duty of candor. Um, this was, let me give you the Stark case. You tell somebody I'm going to put you in um, the best option for you um, uh, from a cost perspective. Um, and you have two choices. One has a higher cost, one has a lower cost, but otherwise they're exa exactly the same. Um, there's no doubt that that's a, a violation uh, of that obligation. Um, at the share class disclosure initiative, what we um, tried to do was efficiently deal with what we saw was a widespread practice that was inconsistent um, with law. But Senator, these are all facts and circumstances uh, situations. And I understand that some people felt that they were within the bounds of the law um, when we felt they were not. Um, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, that there's been clarity brought to this, more clarity brought to this. Um, but I'm also comfortable that uh, the enforcement division um, pursued this believing um, and having that belief based on uh, rigorous analysis that they were on the right side of the law. But I very much take your point that we should not. Um, you know, use ambiguities or uncertainties in the law to our advantage. Yeah, well, let me conclude, Mr. Chairman, uh, about the enforcement sit division uh, action in this case, something that Commissioner Pierce said. The division used prior settlements, which have never been tried before a judge, as the precedence that advisors violated the disclosure obligations. In effect, the agency short circuited the required rulemaking process by adopting a regulation through enforcement rather than through rulemaking. I, I take it to disagree with Commissioner Pierce on that point. Well, I, I agree with 
um, part of what she said, and that is, um, I believe using our administrative courts for matters like this, um, we need to do so cautiously, if at all. Um, and I wish that precedent were in Article Three court. Okay, well, I'll, I'll cut it off there since we're hearing bells ringing, but since we're going into Christmas season, maybe that just means an angel is giving its wings every time a senator runs over his time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 